Now, let's dive into the lives of some of Hollywood's biggest stars who battled with addiction. We'll explore their struggles, their road to recovery, and the impact they had on others. From Elizabeth Taylor's courageous admission to the Betty Ford Clinic, to Richard Burton's hardcore drinking, and Leonard Nimoy's battle with alcohol on the set of Star Trek, we'll uncover the highs and lows of these iconic celebrities. Along the way, we'll also learn about Cary Grant's curious journey with LSD, Joan Crawford's extravagant requests while on tour, and the surprising habits of Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. Plus, we'll delve into the challenges faced by Robert Shaw during the filming of Jaws and Michael Landon's hidden addiction while portraying the clean-cut characters we all loved. So join me, Nostalgic Nick, as we explore the fascinating stories of these Hollywood legends. Stay tuned for more episodes, and don't forget to drink responsibly. Cary Grant, the beloved Hollywood actor, faced a battle with alcoholism in the 1950s. At the time, he sought help from his doctor, who treated him with a controversial method LSD therapy. This treatment, which involved administering the drug to Grant, aimed to change his perspective on life and help him overcome his addiction. The LSD therapy proved to be a turning point for Grant. He credited the drug with providing him with profound personal insights and continued to take it about a hundred times. The treatment had a lasting impact on Grant, who reportedly experienced a newfound sense of self and a more positive outlook on life. Despite the controversy surrounding LSD therapy, Grant was a strong advocate for its use in treating mental health issues. He believed that the therapy had greatly improved his own life and hoped that it could do the same for others. Grant's experience with LSD therapy is just one aspect of his fascinating life. Despite his struggles with addiction, he went on to live a long and successful life, passing away at the age of 82. His legacy as a talented actor and a trailblazer in mental health treatment continues to inspire and influence people to this day. It's interesting to consider the role that LSD therapy played in Grant's life and how it may have contributed to his longevity and success. Despite the challenges he faced, Grant remained open to new experiences and was always willing to try unconventional methods in order to improve his life. His story is a testament to the power of resilience and the importance of seeking help when needed. Michael Landon, known for his wholesome roles on television, led a life that was far from picture perfect. Despite his seemingly idyllic image, he struggled with addiction to both alcohol and Valium, a secret known only to a few close to him. Born Eugene Morris Orovitz on October 31, 1936, Landon's interest in acting began at a young age. After a series of small roles in film and television, he landed the part of Little Joe Cartwright on the hit show Bonanza in 1959, a role he would play for the next 14 years. But even as he was becoming a household name, Landon was battling his demons. His addiction to alcohol and Valium, which he began taking to cope with the stress of his busy career, was a well-kept secret. He would often show up to set under the influence, but his castmates and crew were none the wiser. In 1974, Landon took on the role of Charles Ingalls in Little House on the Prairie, a show that would run for nine seasons and make him a beloved figure in American television. But even as he was playing the ultimate wholesome father figure, his addiction continued to spiral out of control. It wasn't until 1982, after a drunk driving accident, that Landon finally sought help for his addiction. He entered rehab and was able to get sober, but the damage had already been done. In 1991, at the age of 54, Landon was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. He passed away just a few months later, on July 1, 1991. Many suspect that Landon's substance abuse contributed to his untimely death. While the official cause of death was cancer, those close to him believe that his years of heavy drinking and Valium use weakened his body and made him more susceptible to the disease. In the end, Michael Landon's life was a complex tapestry of success and struggle. Despite his wholesome image, he was a man who fought his own demons and ultimately paid the price. His legacy lies on through his work and his story serves as a reminder of the hidden struggles that can lie beneath a seemingly perfect facade. Renowned for her stunning beauty and acting skills, Elizabeth Taylor led a life that was far from picture perfect. Behind the glamour and fame, she struggled with alcoholism and addiction to painkillers for several decades. Born in 1932, Taylor's career in Hollywood began at a young age. She was discovered by chance at the age of 10 and soon became one of the most popular child actors in Hollywood. 
As she grew older, her beauty and talent only became more pronounced, earning her two Academy Awards for Best Actress. Despite her success, Taylor's personal life was fraught with challenges. She was married eight times to seven different men, and her relationships were often tumultuous. In addition, she struggled with her health, undergoing numerous surgeries throughout her life. It was during this time that Taylor turned to alcohol and painkillers to cope with the pain and stress. Her addiction became so severe that she was the first celebrity to check into the Betty Ford Clinic in 1983. This significant event marked a turning point in her life and had a profound impact on public attitudes towards addiction treatment and recovery. Taylor's decision to seek help at the Betty Ford Clinic was a brave one, and it resonated with many people who were struggling with addiction. Her willingness to be open about her struggles helped to break down the stigma surrounding addiction and encourage others to seek help. Throughout her life, Taylor remained committed to helping others. She was a passionate advocate for HIV AIDS research and founded the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation in 1991. She also used her platform to raise awareness about other important social issues, including women's rights and animal welfare. In the end, Elizabeth Taylor's life was marked by both triumph and tragedy. Despite her struggles with addiction and personal challenges, she remained a captivating figure who left an indelible mark on the world of Hollywood. Her legacy continues to inspire and influence people to this day. Robert Shaw's time on the set of Jaws is often remembered for his frequent drinking of scotch. This caused tension, particularly with co-star Richard Dreyfuss. Shaw's drinking was a source of onset tension, but it's important to note that it had a unique effect on his performance. Shaw's character, Quint, was a hard-drinking sea captain, and in scenes where Quint was supposed to be drunk, Shaw's own inebriation seemed to enhance his performance. However, when he was required to be sober, his drinking caused issues. Despite these challenges, Shaw's performance in Jaws remains iconic. His portrayal of the grizzled, rough around the edges Quint is one of the film's most memorable aspects. It's a testament to Shaw's talent as an actor that he was able to deliver such a compelling performance, even in less than ideal circumstances. Shaw's drinking was not a new issue. He had a long history of alcoholism, which had affected his personal life and career. However, during the filming of Jaws, his drinking reached a peak, causing friction with his co-stars and crew members. Despite these challenges, Shaw's performance in Jaws is a lasting legacy. His portrayal of Quint is a complex and nuanced one, and it's a testament to his talent as an actor that he was able to deliver such a compelling performance, even in less than ideal circumstances. Shaw's drinking may have caused tension on set, but it also seemed to fuel his performance, creating one of the most memorable characters in cinema history. Dean Martin, born Dino Paul Christie on June 7, 1917, in Steubenville, Ohio, was a beloved American singer, actor, and comedian, Despite his public image as a heavy drinker, those who knew him well, including his family and close friends, revealed that this was largely an act. In reality, Dean Martin often chose apple juice over alcohol, especially during his performances and on set. Throughout his life, Dean Martin cultivated a charming and charismatic public persona, which contributed to his widespread popularity. However, his balanced personal life stood in contrast to his heavy drinking image. He was known to be a devoted family man, always making time for his wife and children despite his busy career. As a singer, Dean Martin was highly influential, releasing numerous hit singles and albums throughout his career. His smooth voice and effortless delivery made him a favorite among audiences, and his music continues to be celebrated today. Some of his most popular songs include That's Amore, Everybody Loves Somebody, and Sway. In addition to his music career, Dean Martin also achieved great success in acting, appearing in numerous films and television shows. He starred alongside legends such as Jerry Lewis, Frank Sinatra, and Marlon Brando, and his work in entertainment left a lasting impact on the industry. Despite his many accomplishments, Dean Martin remained humble and down-to-earth throughout his life. He was known for his kindness and generosity, often going out of his way to help others. His warm personality and infectious charm made him a beloved figure in the world of entertainment, and his legacy continues to live on through his music and films. In the end, Dean Martin's life and career serve as a testament to his many talents and contributions to the entertainment industry. His ability to balance his public persona with his private life, as well as his success in both music 
and acting make him a truly unique and unforgettable figure in American culture. Leonard Nimoy, best known for his portrayal of the logical and pointy-eared Mr. Spock in the iconic television series Star Trek, faced a personal battle with alcoholism during the height of his fame. The pressure of maintaining his character's stoic demeanor and coping with the sudden stardom took a toll on Nimoy. Born in Boston, Massachusetts, on March 26, 1931, Nimoy was the son of Ukrainian Jewish immigrants. His interest in acting began at a young age, and he pursued it throughout his adolescence. After serving in the United States Army, Nimoy returned to his passion for acting, eventually landing the role of Spock in the original Star Trek series, which aired from 1966 to 1969. As the show gained popularity, Nimoy found himself struggling to cope with the demands of his character and the fame that came with it. Disillusioned with the trappings of stardom, he turned to alcohol as a means of escape. His drinking escalated, becoming a source of concern for those around him. However, Nimoy recognized the need for help and sought treatment after the series ended. He managed to overcome his addiction and went on to reprise his role as Spock in several Star Trek films and other television appearances. Tragically, Nimoy's health took a turn for the worse in his later years. A longtime smoker, he passed away on February 27, 2015, at the age of 83, from complications related to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Despite his struggles, Leonard Nimoy left an indelible mark on the world of acting and, and will always be remembered for his iconic portrayal of Mr. Spock. His legacy continues to inspire new generations of fans and actors alike. After rising to fame as a Hollywood actress, Joan Crawford's life took an unexpected turn when she married the CEO of PepsiCo, Alfred Steele. In this new chapter, Crawford became Pepsi's official ambassador and embarked on a series of world tours to promote the brand. However, behind the glamour of her new role, Crawford's drinking habits started to raise eyebrows. She notoriously requested excessive amounts of various alcohols during these tours, showcasing the extent of her drinking habits. Despite the concerns, Crawford continued to tour and promote Pepsi, often seen with a glass of champagne or cocktail in hand. Her larger-than-life personality and excessive drinking became synonymous with her public image. It is important to note that Crawford's drinking habits did not define her entire career or personal life. She was a highly accomplished actress, known for her powerful on-screen presence and versatility. However, her time as Pepsi's ambassador did provide a glimpse into her personal life and the challenges she faced. As we reflect on Crawford's life and career, it is impossible to ignore the impact of her drinking habits during her time as Pepsi's ambassador. It is a reminder of the complexities and struggles that even the most successful and accomplished individuals can face. Richard Burton's struggle with alcoholism is well documented in Hollywood lore. During the 1970s, the Welsh actor reportedly consumed up to three bottles of vodka a day. This heavy drinking took a toll on both his career and personal life. Burton's alcoholism led to multiple stints in rehab as he tried to get his addiction under control. Despite his efforts, his health continued to decline due to his drinking. He was diagnosed with liver and kidney diseases, which ultimately contributed to his early death at the age of 58. Despite his struggles with alcohol, Burton was a highly accomplished actor. He was nominated for seven Academy Awards throughout his career and won multiple awards for his work on stage and screen. However, his drinking made it difficult for him to maintain a consistent level of performance and it affected his relationships with his colleagues and loved ones. Burton's addiction was not a secret in Hollywood. In fact, it was widely known and discussed. Many people in the industry tried to help him, but ultimately, he was unable to overcome his demons. His story is a tragic reminder of the devastating effects that alcoholism can have on a person's life and career. In the end, Richard Burton's addiction to alcohol contributed to his untimely death. His story serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of heavy drinking and addiction. Despite his many accomplishments and talents, his life was ultimately cut short due to his struggles with alcoholism.